Hello, hello. I am here to film the video for the 2022 cookie planner. Um, for those of you who don't know, the planner is a PDF that runs in the app GoodNotes, so you will have to own that app. It is a, an app that costs $7.99 in the Apple Store. Um, I recently learned that if you're Android, the app Note Shelf will work as well, but I'm not as familiar with that, so I am not able to do tutorial for it right now. But it does have all the functionality um, that Good. It seems to have most of the functionality that Good Notes has. So let's open up Good Notes, um, and here is the 2022 Cookie Planner. Um, I made a help file, so I'm going to definitely a help page, I should say. Um, that's going to link to a lot of these topics. Um, so I'm going to go through this rather methodically so then I can link to each help section. Okay, first off, I'm going to go through the planner pretty quickly and just show you what's included. Um, we have the cover page, um, a thank you page, a title page, and then the table of contents. Each one of these table of contents links directly to the page um, and the tabs obviously link to certain pages too. This is major sections of the planner and this is the beginning of the months. So we have a year at a glance, the main holiday pages, and then this year I also added a fun holiday page. Each one of these sections will link you directly to the month that it's at. And then the calendar pages. So each cal each month has a title page, it has a month calendar, and it has a week calendar. Um, and then behind each week calendar is two cookie order worksheets um, pre-filled for you. So you can duplicate this as many times as you want, but I just loaded two in there for you to get you started. And then to the week, until all the way through like December. So let's flip through December. I'll show you the next part. Okay, planner worksheets. So these are extra pages that I have included that you can duplicate and move about your planner to really personalize this planner to you. If you wanted your planner to be a daily planner, you would duplicate this page and you would just pop it behind each week. Um, one for each week or five for each week, it's up to you. I have a meal planning page that you could use each week, a monthly habit tracker, um, just somewhere to make a list of anything that you need to make a list of. You could write what your list is up at the top. And then the cookie worksheets, and I will be going over the cookie worksheets in more detail later and like how to use them. I guess I can I can flip through them real quick. So cookie order worksheet, cookie order worksheet blank. I'm gonna show you later in the video how to um, completely customize this information for yourself if you want to. Um, a cookie worksheet icing. Just kind of flip through these pretty quickly. Like I said later in the video, I will um, Go over those a lot more in detail and then this year i also put like a future planning section because i was just writing future orders in the back of my planner on a blank page so i specifically have a 2023 planning section it's tabbed linked to the tab up there you have your whole year you have just kind of a grid um where you can just write down orders so you can just make sure you're not overbooking and you could even like pop cookie order worksheets behind this if you wanted to collect that much information or just write it here and save it for um, when the 2023 planner comes out. And then blank pages. I gave you actual blank pages, um, dotted kind of grid blank pages and blank tables if you need some kind of table to put information into. And then the help section. Um, right now these are not linked, but all of these will be linked um, directly to the section of the YouTube video that you need help with. And that is the planner this year.
Okay, one of the biggest comments or questions that I get is that the tabs or the links don't work. So like if you clicked on January, it doesn't link, it does nothing. And the reason for that, almost guaranteed every single time is you are in navigation mode instead of editing mode. So if you tap on this planner, um, you'll be able to see, let's actually close that tab so it's easier, that we can go into editing mode up here. So a quick tap will take you full screen or it will take you out where you can go into editing mode. So if your tabs or links are not working, almost guaranteed you're in editing mode where you're gonna see all of these tools here. And then instead of when you're clicking on a link, you are actually writing, you're not clicking. So let's get rid of that. Um, so to navigate through the planner, you need to turn off that link right there and then your links will work again. And again, if you wanna go full page, just tap somewhere where there's not a link and it will open it up so you can see the full page without the bar at the top. Next, I wanted to go over the different writing tools that are in GoodNotes. So let's come over to one of the, actually let's stay in the, the grid. So I'm gonna tap um, somewhere where I know there's not a link. All of these numbers are actually linked to the weeks. Um, so I just know not to tap there um, to go out. I'm gonna tap somewhere where I know there's not a link. I'm gonna come into editing mode. And up here are the tools that you're gonna want to use to fill out your planner. Um, I can't see the whole page here, so I'm just gonna give it a pinch and it's going to um, make it like fit on the screen that's available there. So this is the pen tool. Um, if you click, tap on it once it selects it. If you tap on it again, you can change the type of pen, um, how sharp it is and the pressure sensitivity. I'm just gonna leave it on fountain pen, like medium, medium. And for that, you can change the color. So let's change it, um, we're on the pink page. Let's make it like a super dark, no, let's not. Let's go with like a gray blue. Um, and then you can change the thickness. You can do thin, medium, or super thick. I usually go with medium on this calendar page. And then when I go to actually write, um, I make it big and then I write on the page. So let's say that, oh, I have the wrong color there. Um, I wanted that color. So let's say Sally has a birthday order for 48 cookies. Um, so yeah, we wrote there. My system is usually when there's an order request, I will write it in like that. And then I will use the next tool that I'm gonna show you um, when the order has been um, accepted. Then I come in and I just I will come in and I will use the highlighter to highlight that order. Um, I don't like that one. So actually another quick tip is if you take three fingers and swipe to the left that way, then it, un it does not kind of an undo for you because I want that size, high, the largest highlighter there. And I'm gonna highlight the order hold it, it's gonna make a straight line, and then I know that that order is good to go. Um, and I definitely have 48 cookies that week, um, so you don't overbook yourself. So we have the pen, we have the highlighter, where you can change the colors and the thickness. You have the eraser, where you had the different thicknesses and it will just erase whatever you wrote. It won't erase anything that was already on the page when you loaded this planner, but um, anything else, besides images. Okay, I don't use the shapes tool. 
um, I do use the selection tool sometimes, so let's put Sally back on there. Um, if you click this selection tool, you can circle something and then take your finger and you can move it. Um, let's say I wrote it on the wrong day, move it to a different day. So that's the selection tool. You can move stuff around your planner. Um, the elements tool, we're going to get to a little bit later, but there are a lot of pre-installed um, elements that the elements are basically stickers that you put on your page. Um, so yeah, they have like post-it notes and stuff like that. I actually made stickers for each month um, that you can download and I'm going to show you how to use later on in this tutorial. But elements are basically stickers that you can put anywhere on your page and use. And then images, let's flip the page here, cookie order worksheet. Um, this is where you would insert images. You're going to tap it once and you can see your most recent images right there. If you tap it again, then you're going to see like where you can select your albums and stuff like that. Um, let's insert this one. This is a cute set that I just did. Let's say that was an inspiration photo that was sent to me. So I would insert that image right there. So I would have it um, to come back to instead of scrolling through all of my messages and trying to find the inspiration photos that were sent to me. Um, this tool right here is the text tool. If you don't want to write, you can type. Um, so let's type in, I'm, I have my pencil. I'm going to set that down so I'll, we don't have to deal with that. Um, two, five, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, another cool thing about the link tool is if someone had given you um, like a link or you wanted to link a tutorial that you remembered, if you um, copy and paste the link, you can actually, let's put in www, let's just go to Google, google.com. You'll see that it's automatically underlined. It recognizes it as a link. Um, so then when I come out, and we come out of editing mode, you can click on that and it will take you to the external link. I'm going to go back into GoodNotes. So yeah, that if you wanted to add a link, you can. Um, let's come back into editing and see if I got all the tools. That laser thing I don't use. People use that like when they're presenting. So that's basically all of the tools that I use for GoodNotes 5. The next thing I wanted to talk about was bookmarking. Um, this is a bookmark right up here and it allows you to bookmark and easily find a page again. So let's say we're in May. I wanted to bookmark like what week I'm on. So May 9th to May 15th, I hit this little bookmark tool. Um, and then let's just completely get away from that again. And now I'm gonna come in and push these four squares up at the top here, and that's kind of your navigator. And now you have your thumbnails, your favorites, and your outlines. So if you click on favorites, that's where you're gonna find your bookmarked pages and you can tap on it and get right back to some of those pages that you use most. I think the absolute beauty of Digital Planner is the ability to move and duplicate pages um, wherever and however many times that you want. Um, like I had mentioned earlier in this video, behind each week, I have two cookie order worksheets. A lot of weeks, I have more than two orders a week. So what do we do about that? We want to duplicate these. Um, I'll usually fill in one, and then before I'll start filling in the second one, I will click these four squares up here. We want to be in thumbnails. And it takes you directly to the page that you're on. So I'm on page 78. I'm going to hit this down arrow, and I'm going to hit duplicate. So now I have three of those pages instead of two. If I knew that I was going to have a lot more orders that week, you can duplicate and insert multiple pages at a time. Um, so you would hit select. I'm going to select these three cookie order worksheet pages. I'm going to hit copy. 
I'm gonna click done. And then right after this third one, I'm gonna hit the down arrow. I'm gonna hit add page after and paste pages. And it's gonna paste all three of those pages. So now after this May week, right here, we now have six cookie order worksheets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six cookie order worksheets, and then we're on to the next week. Um, and you can do that with any page in this planner. You can take the daily pages. Let's actually do that. Let's say we wanted to make this a daily planner. So we are going to go to the daily sheets and get this today's plan page. I'm going to click on it, hit the four arrows, and it um, normally doesn't take this long. It just hasn't loaded. Once you've like loaded all the pages, it doesn't take time to fill. So we're going to hit, oh, I did it wrong. So hit select. I'm going to select that today's plan page. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to hit done. Now, instead of scrolling back through here and trying to find January, I'm going to close out of that, come into January and go to that first week. And I'm going to hit those arrows again. And you'll notice we're magically at that first week. And I am going to add page after, paste page. And now I have that today's plant page and I'm going to duplicate that five times. So now we have, oh, I put those in the wrong spot. Okay, so select one, two, three, four, five. We're going to copy those and we actually want to paste them after the week. I actually pasted them after the month on accident. So add page after, paste pages. So they're after that week. They're going to be after this week. Actually, I might have clicked add page before. I have no idea what I did to get those in the wrong spot. But anyways, you get the idea. Um, we just made this easily a daily planner for the month of January. Looks like we have two more to do. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, and while we're here, since I did make that mistake, let's show you how to delete mass pages. We're going to select, and we're going to delete these pages I put in the wrong spot. Um, just like that and we'll hit done close um, so now when we come into January we have made this a daily planner so we have our week and then we have five days we have um, our cookie order worksheet and then the days again and the cookie order worksheet so it's the way to make this planner completely yours um, and just the way that you plan to use it. Okay, so how to move pages around your planner. If you're like me, you make mistakes. Um, so to navigate through this, we don't want to be in that. So we're, you can go to the week um, and let's say that, where did I put that first? I think I put it way early. So let's say I put this worksheet um, in completely the wrong week. Um, so instead of copying and pasting it, you can take that single page and say, instead of after this first week in January, it's supposed to be this second week in January, you just grab it and you move it to where you want it to be. So hit close. So now it is actually after the second week in January. I don't know that that was super obvious, but it used to be in um, this week, the December kind of first to second, and now it's in the second week um, where it's supposed to be. Okay, 
Okay, so now for one of the most powerful features of this planner, um, obviously, besides being able to duplicate pages and move them around and make this completely your own, um, is the handwriting search. Um, because we put the text in here earlier, you cannot, um, you can't erase text. You just hold on it, hit edit. Um, we're going to select all of it and just get rid of it. Um, go back to the pin and the text is now, the text box is gone. So let's, um, we're not going to write a whole lot here because I don't need you to watch me do that. So Wendy Smith. You can see my handwriting isn't super neat. She's going to be a new customer. She contacted me through email. Date of end is January um, 27th. You get that anyways. Um, so we know we wrote Wendy somewhere in this planner. So I'm going to come out of editing mode. We're going to come over to the contents. Um, and then we're going to come up to the search. And I know that Wendy had an order. I wanted to see if she had like another order previously in the year. So I'm gonna type in Wendy and it's gonna find in my handwriting, Wendy Smith is on page 14 um, and it's gonna go right to it. And this is a, um, I don't know the word I'm thinking of, it's a, just something that GoodNotes does, and it is definitely a really good feature um, that I use and I enjoy. Now for a really fun part, um, using stickers. Um, GoodNotes 5 recently added this Elements button, and it's a really easy way to be able to access stickers. I made, um, if you notice, each month, kind of has a different color theme going on with it. And I made a bundle of stickers that matches every single month um, to use that color that month or just kind of mix and match these rainbow colors throughout. Um, let's be in May, because that's a pretty color. So when you download this planner, you also had the option um, to download all of the monthly stickers. So you download that somewhere on your iPad where you're going to remember them, like in your downloads folder. Um, just remember where you save them because that's gonna be important to miss next step. So to get them in your planner um, and in the elements, you click the elements button and I'm gonna select it again um, and you'll notice I've already imported like a few months. So I imported um, May, the gold one, the January one, and the December one. Oh, and the April one. So I'm going to show you how to import another month right now. So we're going to scroll to the end of this. We're going to hit the plus button down here. And we're going to make a new collection. Which one did I? Did I not? I can't remember which ones I did. I'll come. Let's come back and look. So May. So I didn't do February. Let's do February. So I'm going to hit the plus. I'm going to title this February and you can name it wherever you want. Um, you name it the month that it is or the color that it is, really whatever you want. You could download all of these in the same folder if you wanted to. Um, but I like to have it by month. And then I am going to import from, because they're not photos in my photo album, they're actually on a drive um, kind of in my iPad. So this is where you're going to navigate to wherever you saved them to. Mine are um, actually in this folder, individual stickers, and I'm pretty sure I did February. So we're gonna click February and Kind of the one thing that is a little bit of a bummer is you need to add these one at a time, but it goes really quickly. So there are, um, so you're gonna click that, import from it takes you to the same place, and we're just gonna go one at a time and import all of these stickers. But the good news is, is you only have to do this once, and then they're in, um, they're in here for good. And not just for this planner, but for anything that you use for good notes.
Let's get these last two. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit the Create button because I have all the stickers in here. I'm gonna hit Create. And now I have one named February right here, right before May. Um, and I can use these stickers, those are purple. So let's put them, they'd be really pretty kind of with the pink January. So let's come out, let's go to January and we're gonna play around with that month. Um, this is an element that I already put on there. I'm gonna push and hold it. Um, I'm gonna edit it and hit that little X to get rid of it. So that's how you can get rid of stickers. So we're gonna come into the elements, click it again. I'm in this February. Again, you can flip between the folders that they already gave you or the ones that you made down there. And you take it and you just click it and it is now inserted. You can resize it. Um, these flags would be really, really cute for a birthday. So if this was someone's birthday, you can put the flags there. You come in and write Jane's birthday. And again, I don't know why. So again, three fingers if you make a mistake. You can hit this um, back arrow to undo or just take three fingers and swipe um, to get rid or the other way to redo. Um, I do like to make it bigger when I'm writing so then it's not so sloppy. So we're gonna write Jane's birthday. Just like that, we're gonna come back down and now you have that sticker. Um, and again, if you don't like the size of it, you can move it around or where it's placed resize and you can resize that whole thing just like that okay so that's how you use the stickers um there's lots of them you can flag things um however you want to use these post-it notes paper clips i i want i imagined these to be kind of like checklist to do items. You could even use this on this page or on the other page to have your orders and then you can like fill it in. Sorry, my dogs are like going a little bit crazy down there. It's playtime, I guess. Um, okay, so that is the stickers. Um, you can go on Etsy and find all kinds of digital stickers to purchase. Um, I'll probably be making more also as the year goes by and I just feel like it. So keep your eye open for that. Um, maybe like holiday-ish type stickers. Oh, one other sticker that I use all the time. You can actually, for your social media, you can use this page. Um, I would, let's just come in and duplicate it real quick. Say if you wanted one for you and one for your social media, um, we'll make the second one social media and we are just going to, get rid of everything. Let's get rid of this. And then you can use this to show your availability with the um, stickers here as well. So booked that week. And then I would come in with the highlighter, um, pick a color that I wanted to use. That's gonna go with a purpley color. And then we're gonna line and if you hold it down, it makes the line straight. And that would be an easy way to make an availability candle calendar with these um, stickers. Easy. For this next section, I wanted to go over the different cookie worksheets um, individually and how I use them. Um, or how they were intended to be used. Obviously, you can use them however you want, um, but I'm just gonna go through these real quick in case you had any questions on the intentionality of any of these pages. So this cookie order worksheet is the main page that I use. Um, anytime someone fills out a Google form, all of the information goes directly on here. Um, so I have it and it's easy to find and it's in the right part of my calendar. Um, I gave you a blank one this time. The, when I asked for requests um, for changes or additions to this planner, 
one of the biggest things was people said that they don't use all of this information or they need a different information or something like that. So I gave a blank worksheet here um, that you can fill in yourself. I'll go over that a little bit later. Um, that section will be linked in the back of the planner. Next is the cookie worksheet. I imagine using this for um, classes mostly when it's really important to really analyze a cookie and know how many steps there are and how much icing you need and which consistency you need like for every single cookie so you can do um, the multiplication that you need to get it accurate. So you would do this, the sketches, um, the steps that you need to teach um, or do and then what colors, consistencies, and um, I would put the weights there. Um, for those of you who haven't heard this trick, it's actually a really good one. You put your scale um, down, you put your cookie down, and then you just take an empty cellophane bag and put it on top of your cookie, and then take the color that you're gonna do and just kind of ice on top of the cellophane bag as your scale is teared out to zero. And then you'll know like exactly how much of that icing you're going to use. Um, and after you've done that color, hit tear, use the next color, kind of note how much icing you use. And that's just a really um, easy way to accurately calculate icing so you're not stuck with a whole lot of extra icing, um, especially if you're doing cookie kits or something like that. Um, a whole icing worksheet um, if you wanted to take information from this one and like move it over and say how much icing you needed I would write the individual cookie names up here um, like a gingerbread man gingerbread house and Santa and then what colors you needed um, and how much icing you needed for each cookie and then total it over there class planning um, this one's pretty self-explanatory, class theme, date and time, price, anything you need to remember to prep for, and anything you need to not forget the day of the class, you would write here, and then sketching out any designs you need to teach, a class roster, you can write down their names, email, phone number, and if they paid, um, and any extra notes you have. Holiday planning, um, you use this to plan your holiday sets. So what holiday, it, Christmas time, what pickup dates and times you have decided will work for you, and then what sets you're going to offer and what price you're gonna offer them at, um, any sketches that you might need, any um, thing you might need to order. And to use this, I would, um, actually to use any of these pages. I wouldn't write directly on these pages. I would duplicate them and move them to the section of the planner that I'm teaching the class or doing the holiday. So I would copy this holiday planning sheet. Um, again, you hit select, and then we're going to copy it. And then I would move it um, into December. So hit done, come out of here. So there's December, I can actually see it here. So let's put it actually before this and right after the title page. So we're gonna hit add page after and paste page. And now that planning page is safely in the December section of our planner while we still have um, the blank one over here. It's not the end of the world. If you like write on these, you just duplicate it and then um, I forgot where I was at, I was right there. You duplicate it and then erase the duplicated page and you have a blank again. Um, worst comes to worst, if you delete out a page, just install the planner again and copy the page and move it over. Um, okay, next page is holiday order tracking. The way I intended to use this is if you do manual holiday orders if you have them like emailing you or texting you or messaging you for orders i personally do it through the square website where they like pay and that's it um but before i actually did do it um, manually so you would write the holiday sets that you offer we have the gingerbread man um gingerbread house and santa 
So you'd write the sets that you offered up there. You'd write the name of the person you or that ordered here and how many of each set that they ordered. And then you would have that all ready to go for you. Record of payments for anybody that pays you. Um, for cookies um, or classes or anything you want to record. Name, how much is due if you do deposits. Um, I have that for you. And then kind of for the final payment that's there. And then record of expenses. This is for your tax keeping purposes. Um, what you spent, the amount you spent, what store it was at, what tax category it lands under, and the description of what you purchased. Um, you could even go so far as to put a blank page behind this one um, and put photos of your receipts so you have everything right there. Okay, and then there's a blank pages for any sketches that you want to do. Again, move this throughout your planner, put it wherever you want. Um, if you needed more sketching space behind a cookie order worksheet or something like that. Um, and then a collabs page for any collabs that you have agreed to join, what date it's due, the hashtag you're supposed to use, the theme, the hosts of the collabs, so you can credit them and um, tag them in your post and any ideas you have for that collab. And then we're on to the 2023 planning. So those are the cookie sheets. Um, if you have any more questions, please let me know um, and I'll answer them for you. Okay, the last section of help for this video. Um, I had mentioned a little bit earlier that the biggest suggestion I got for this planner was either removing or adding um, something to this section and I can't make it work for everybody. So what I did do was I gave you a blank one right here. Um, I would come in, I would duplicate it. So then you're working with a clean copy. Um, we have two of them now. And then again, my dogs are going nuts over there. If I didn't have my phone on a stand, I would show you. Um, okay, so for customer information, you can come in here. Um, I would type just to make it look nice. If you wanted the exact font, I used Mogan in this planner. It was purchased from Creative Market. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna come in and I am going to add, let's get rid of the pencil for now. Let's not get rid of the pencil. Let's, I like to do everything lowercase just because we're gonna do name um, and let's, Make all of these, can you, can you type in that? Oh, we can go here. We're gonna make all of those. How big do we want that to be? Oh, they're not, it's not selected, so it's not changing. Okay, select your text. And now we're gonna come up here and we're gonna change the size of it to, let's make them 68, that looks good. So you have the name. Um, again, you can tap on it and use these bars up here to move it around in your planner. Um, let's add another one. We're going to write phone number. Again, I didn't change the, the font, so we're going to make that Mogan. Was it 58? I don't think it was 58. What was this one? 68. Okay, so it's... Hopefully your memory is better than mine. So we made this 68. And that squished. So you're going to drag this. And then we're going to use this. And we're going to move it to wherever we want to move it. And then you keep going. Um, and when you're done... Um, put the prices, anything you want to track over here. Um, and you have a custom form that you can take um, and duplicate or copy and move into your planner. So what I would do is I'm going to give you two versions of this planner to download. Um, one of them is going to be filled with the like pre-made cookie order worksheets and one of them is going to be unfilled so in the unfilled one um 
oh, we need to come out of the editing mode or out of the writing mode and into the editing mode. In the filled one, it will have the cookie order worksheets um, behind each of these weeks. In the unfilled one, I will not have these cookie order worksheets there. So you'll want to install the unfilled planner and then you would come in um, I'm not going to find it that way. Let's come into the cookie worksheets. We're going to find the one that I worked on. Hit the four squares. We're going to hit, oh, select. Grab this one. Hit copy. And done. Um, and then you would come to the week. And I would just, if you wanted to do it this way, I would pre-fill the whole planner. So again, um, if you, let's change, we're going to change, a oh no, I didn't want to do that. We're going to change April to how it would look if you did the unfilled planner. So let's delete those. Okay, so April now should be just the weeks. So this is what it would look like if you, um, installed the unfilled planner. So remember we went and we copied that custom page. I'm going to hit the down arrow. I'm going to hit add page after. I'm going to hit paste page. And now you have your cookie, your custom cookie order worksheet that you made. We're going to duplicate that. And to make it easy for yourself, um, if you wanted to put two um, behind each page, let's say we wanted to put three behind each page, we're going to put three on that first one. We're gonna hit select for those three pages, hit copy, and done. And then you can see which ones of these are weeks. So I'm gonna come down to these weeks, add page after, paste pages. Go to the next week, add page after, paste pages. And the last week in April, add page after, paste pages. And you would do this for the whole year. You saw how fast April was. It would just be that times 12. Um, hit close. And now for the month of April, it is filled with your custom um, cookie order worksheets. That simple. So I hope that that anybody that asked for like a specific worksheet to fill in what they wanted to um the information that they wanted to collect for their customers, that this is a really good workaround. So thank you so much for watching this video, for taking the time to look at the planner. I hope it was helpful. Um, I hope having that help page linked in the back of the planner is going to be really helpful to really navigate to the sections that you just forgot about. After you use GoodNotes for a while, it all becomes really second nature, but until you get used to the program, um, it's not, and I hope that that help page will help you navigate just kind of directly to the part that you need to get help with, and that's that. Um, if you have any other questions, um, just message me. Um, you can email me, cookieangelbakery at gmail.com, or send me a DM on Instagram. Um, the messages on Facebook get lost. Um, people message me and I swear it's like three weeks later that I see that I have a message from someone who's not one of my like personal friends. Um, I see the ones on Instagram a lot faster. So email me or send me a message on Instagram and I will try my best to answer any questions that you have. Thanks so much.